As someone who has spent decades studying success and personal development, I've come to understand that one of the biggest obstacles standing in the way of our dreams is ourselves. Yes, you heard that right. We are often our own worst enemy when it comes to achieving our goals and living the life we truly desire. But don't worry, you are not alone in this struggle. In fact, it is a common challenge that many of us face. The good news is there are ways to overcome this and get out of our own way. In today's message, I will be sharing five powerful strategies that can help you break free from self-sabotage and start making progress towards your dreams. So if you're tired of feeling stuck and ready to take control of your life, then this video is for you. By the end of it, you will have a clear understanding of what you need to do to turn things around and start living the life you truly deserve. So without further ado, let's dive into the five ways to get out of your own way and achieve your dreams. Starting with number five. The fifth way to get out of your own way and achieve your dreams is to practice self-care and self-compassion. We live in a society that glorifies the hustle and grind. We are constantly bombarded with messages that tell us to work harder, push ourselves to the limit, and never take a break. And while hard work and determination are important, we often forget the importance of taking care of ourselves. Self-care and self-compassion are not selfish acts. They are essential for our well-being and success. As the saying goes, you cannot pour from an empty cup. If you are not taking care of yourself, how can you expect to give your best to your dreams and goals? So, what exactly is self-care? It is simply taking the time to prioritize your physical, mental, and emotional health. It means listening to your body and giving it what it needs, whether that be rest, exercise, or a healthy meal. It means taking breaks when you need them and not feeling guilty about it. It means setting boundaries and saying no when necessary. It means treating yourself with kindness and compassion. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have time for self-care. I have too much to do and too little time. And to that I say, if you don't have time for self-care, then you are doing something wrong. Self-care is not a luxury, it is a necessity. And when you prioritize it, you will find that you have more energy, focus, and productivity to tackle your goals. But self-care is not just about taking care of your physical needs. It is also about taking care of your mental and emotional well-being. We live in a fast-paced world where stress and anxiety are at an all-time high. And if we don't take care of our mental and emotional health, it can hold us back from achieving our dreams. So, how do we practice self-care in this aspect? The first step is to be aware of your thoughts and emotions. When you are feeling overwhelmed or stressed, Take a step back and assess the situation. Is there something you can do to alleviate the stress? Can you delegate tasks or ask for help? Or do you simply need to take a break and do something that brings you joy? Another important aspect of self-care is self-compassion. We are often our own worst critic, constantly beating ourselves up for our mistakes and shortcomings. But self-compassion means treating yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would show to a friend. It means acknowledging that you are human and that it is okay to make mistakes. It means forgiving yourself and moving on. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I have big dreams and goals and I can't afford to take a break or be kind to myself. I need to be tough and push myself to the limit. And to that I say, it is time to change your mindset. Self-care and self-compassion are not signs of weakness. They are signs of strength. It takes courage to prioritize your well-being and to show yourself kindness and understanding. Think about it. When you are physically exhausted and mentally drained, how can you expect to give your best to your dreams and goals? How can you expect to have the energy and drive to pursue them with passion and determination? It is only when you take care of yourself that you can truly show up as your best self and achieve your full potential. Moving on to number four. The fourth way to get out of your own way and achieve your dreams is to surround yourself with positivity. We live in a world where negativity surrounds us. We turn on the news, and we are bombarded with stories of violence, tragedy, and despair. We scroll through social media, and we see people comparing themselves to others, feeling inadequate and unworthy. We have people in our lives who bring us down with their constant complaints and pessimistic outlook. And worst of all, we have our own inner voice. The voice of doubt and fear that tells us we are not good enough, smart enough, or capable enough to achieve our dreams. But I am here to tell you that you have the power to change that. You have the power to surround yourself with positivity. And in doing so, you will pave the way for your own success and happiness. So, 
How do we do this? How do we surround ourselves with positivity in a world that seems to thrive on negativity? The first step is to take control of your environment. This means being intentional about who and what you allow into your life. It means cutting out toxic relationships and limiting your exposure to negative news and media. It means creating a space that is conducive to positivity, whether it be your home, your workplace, or your social circle. The second step is to cultivate a positive mindset. This is not something that happens overnight, but rather a daily practice. It starts with being aware of your thoughts and consciously choosing to replace negative thoughts with positive ones. It means focusing on gratitude and finding the good in every situation. It means surrounding yourself with positive affirmations and reading books and listening to podcasts that inspire and uplift you. The third step is to seek out positive people. They say that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and this could not be more true. Surround yourself with people who support and encourage you, who believe in your dreams and push you to be your best self. These are the people who will lift you up when you are feeling down, who will celebrate your successes with you, and who will remind you of your worth and potential when you forget. But perhaps the most important step of all is to become a positive person yourself. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, Be the change you wish to see in the world. If you want to surround yourself with positivity, you must first embody it. This means being kind, compassionate, and uplifting to those around you. It means being a source of light and positivity in a world that can sometimes feel dark and hopeless. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. This all sounds great in theory, but how do we actually put this into practice? How do we find the strength and motivation to surround ourselves with positivity when negativity seems to be the norm? Well, my friends, it all starts with a choice. A choice to take control of your life and your thoughts. A choice to seek out positivity and reject negativity. A choice to believe in yourself and your dreams no matter what anyone else says. And most importantly, a choice to take action and make changes in your life that will lead you towards a more positive and fulfilling existence. I'm not saying that this will be easy. In fact, it may be one of the hardest things you ever do. But I can guarantee you that it will be worth it. When you surround yourself with positivity, you will see your dreams and goals become more attainable. You will find yourself feeling more motivated, inspired, and confident. And you will attract more positivity and abundance into your life. My challenge to you is this. Take a good look at your life and ask yourself, Am I surrounding myself with positivity? If the answer is no, then it is time to make a change. It is time to take control of your environment. Cultivate a positive mindset, seek out positive people, and become a positive person yourself. Now, to number three. The third way to get out of your own way and achieve your dreams is to take action and be consistent. Now, I know this may seem like a simple concept. But let me tell you, it is one of the most powerful tools you have in your arsenal. You see, dreams are not achieved by sitting around and waiting for them to come true. They require action. They require effort. And most importantly, they require consistency. One of the biggest mistakes people make is waiting for the perfect moment to take action. They say things like, I'll start tomorrow, or I'll wait until I have more time. But the truth is, there is never a perfect moment. The time will never be just right. You have to create the perfect moment by taking action. Now, as the saying goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So what does taking action look like? It means setting clear and specific goals for yourself, and then taking the necessary steps to achieve them. It means getting out of your comfort zone and doing things that may scare you. It means being willing to fail and learn from your mistakes. It means being proactive and not waiting for opportunities to come to you, but rather creating your own opportunities. But taking action is not enough. You must also be consistent. Consistency is the key to success. It is the glue that holds everything together. You can take all the action in the world, but if you are not consistent, you will not see the results you desire. Consistency means showing up every day and putting in the work, even when you don't feel like it. It means making sacrifices and staying committed to your goals, even when it gets tough. Let me give you an example. Imagine you want to lose weight and get in shape. You start off strong, going to the gym every day and eating healthy. But then, after a few weeks, you start to lose motivation. You skip a day at the gym, then another, and before you know it, you're back to your old habits. This is where consistency comes in. 
If you had stayed consistent and continued to put in the work, you would have seen the results you desired. But because you lacked consistency, you fell back into your old patterns. Consistency is not always easy, but it is necessary for success. And the good news is, it is a habit that can be developed, just like going to the gym and working out your muscles. You must also work out your consistency muscles. Start small, set achievable goals for yourself, and stick to them. As you build consistency, you will see that it becomes easier and easier to stay on track and achieve your dreams. Now, I know that taking action and being consistent can be challenging. We live in a world where instant gratification is the norm. We want results, and we want them now. But let me tell you, success is not a sprint. It is a marathon. It requires patience, determination, and most importantly, consistency. So, how do you stay consistent? The first step is to have a strong why. Your why is your motivation, your reason for wanting to achieve your dreams. It is what will keep you going when things get tough. So take the time to identify your why, write it down, put it somewhere you can see it every day, and let it be your driving force. The second step is to have a plan. As the saying goes, failing to plan is planning to fail. You must have a clear and specific plan for how you will achieve your goals. Break your goals down into smaller manageable steps, and create a timeline for when you want to achieve each step. This will help you stay on track and make progress towards your dreams. The third step is to surround yourself with the right people. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So surround yourself with people who support and encourage your dreams, who inspire you to be better, and who hold you accountable. These people will help you stay consistent and on track towards achieving your dreams. And finally, the fourth step is to believe in yourself. You are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. Believe in your abilities, trust in the process, and have faith that you will achieve your dreams. As Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Now to number two. The number two way to get out of your own way and achieve your dreams is by setting clear and achievable goals. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. Goals? That's it? That's the big secret to success? But let me tell you my friends, setting clear and achievable goals is not just some simple task. It is a powerful tool that can transform your life and lead you to the path of success. But before we dive into the power of goal setting, let me ask you a question. How many of you have dreams? Dreams that you have been holding on to for years, maybe even decades. Dreams of becoming successful, of living a fulfilling life, of making a difference in this world. I'm sure most of you have your hands raised right now. But here's the thing, my friends. Dreams are just dreams until you turn them into goals. Goals are what give your dreams direction and purpose. They are the stepping stones that will lead you to your ultimate destination. Now I know some of you may have tried setting goals in the past, and maybe you didn't achieve them, and that's okay. We all have experienced setbacks and failures in our journey toward success. But let me tell you, it's not the failure that defines us, it's how we respond to it. You see, setting clear and achievable goals is not just about writing down a list of things you want to accomplish. It's about having a plan, a roadmap, and the determination to see it through. It's about taking action even when things get tough and staying committed to your goals. So, how do we set clear and achievable goals? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. Imagine yourself in the future, living your dream life. What does it look like? How does it feel? The more vivid and detailed your vision is, the more motivated you will be to achieve it. Next, write down your goals. And I mean physically write them down. Studies have shown that people who write down their goals are more likely to achieve them. Writing down your goals also makes them more tangible and real. But here's the key, my friends. Your goals must be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Specific. Your goals must be clear and well-defined. Instead of saying, I want to be successful, say, I want to start my own business and make a profit of $100,000 in the next two years. Measurable. Your goals must have a way to track your progress. This will help you stay motivated and see how far you've come. Achievable. Your goals must be realistic and within your reach. Setting unrealistic goals will only lead to disappointment and discouragement. Relevant. Your goals must align with your overall vision and values. Ask yourself, is this goal important to me? 
Will it bring me closer to my dream life? I'm bound. Your goals must have a deadline. This will create a sense of urgency and push you to take action. Now, I want to emphasize the importance of setting achievable goals. Many people make the mistake of setting too big of a goal, and when they fail to achieve it, they give up. But let me tell you, my friends, small goals lead to big successes. Think of it this way. If you want to lose 50 LABs, you don't just wake up one day and expect to lose all the weight. You start by setting a goal to lose 5 pounds in a month, and then another 5 pounds the next month, and so on. And before you know it, you have achieved your ultimate goal. The same goes for any other goal. Start small, and as you achieve each goal, set a new one that will bring you closer to your ultimate dream. This will not only keep you motivated, but it will also build your confidence and belief in yourself. Lastly, my friends, I want to remind you that setting goals is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. As you achieve your goals, set new ones. Keep challenging yourself, keep growing, and keep moving forward. Now, the one you've been waiting for. The number one way to get out of your own way and achieve your dreams. Now I know what you may be thinking. You may be thinking, Jim, there are so many different ways to achieve success. How can you say that there's a number one? Well, my friends, let me tell you. After years of studying successful people and their habits, I have come to the conclusion that the number one way to achieve your dreams is to identify and challenge your limiting beliefs. You see, we all have dreams and aspirations. We all have that burning desire within us to achieve greatness, to leave a mark on this world. But oftentimes, we are the ones standing in our own way. We have these limiting beliefs that hold us back from reaching our full potential. These beliefs may have been ingrained in us since childhood, or they may have developed over time through our experiences and interactions with others. But regardless of where they come from, these limiting beliefs are like chains that keep us from soaring to new heights. So what are these limiting beliefs? Well, they can take many forms. They can be thoughts like, I'm not smart enough, or I'm not talented enough, or I'm too old, or I'm too young, or I don't have enough money, or I don't have enough connections. These beliefs may seem harmless, but they are the very things that hold us back from taking action towards our dreams. They are the voices in our heads that tell us we can't, we shouldn't, we won't. But I am here to tell you, my friends, that these beliefs are not facts. They are simply thoughts. And thoughts can be changed. You see, our thoughts create our reality. If we constantly tell ourselves that we are not good enough, then we will never be good enough. But if we challenge those thoughts and replace them with empowering beliefs, then we can achieve anything we set our minds to. Now I know that identifying and challenging these limiting beliefs is not an easy task. It takes time and effort. But I promise you, it is worth it. So let me share with you a few steps that you can take to identify and challenge your limiting beliefs. The first step is to become aware of your thoughts. Pay attention to the thoughts that come up when you think about your dreams and goals. Are they positive or negative? Are they empowering or limiting? Once you become aware of your thoughts, you can start to question them. Ask yourself, is this thought true? Where did it come from? How is it holding me back? By questioning your thoughts, you can start to see that they are just thoughts, and they do not have to control your actions. The next step is to replace those limiting beliefs with empowering beliefs. For example, if you have a belief that you are not smart enough to achieve your dreams, replace it with, I am capable of learning and growing. If you have a belief that you are too old to start a new career, replace it with, it's never too late to pursue my passions. By consciously choosing empowering beliefs, you are reprogramming your mind to think positively and take action towards your dreams. Another powerful way to challenge your limiting beliefs is to look for evidence that proves them wrong. Instead of focusing on the reasons why you can't achieve your dreams, focus on the reasons why you can. Look for examples of people who have achieved similar goals despite facing similar obstacles. This will help you see that your limiting beliefs are not based on reality, but rather on a limited perspective. Lastly, Surround yourself with people who believe in you and your dreams. We are greatly influenced by the people we spend the most time with. If you surround yourself with negative, limiting people, you will start to adopt their beliefs. But if you surround yourself with positive, supportive people, you will start to believe in yourself and your abilities. So choose your inner circle wisely. My friends, I want to leave you with this message. 
Your dreams are possible. You have the power within you to achieve greatness. But in order to do so, you must identify and challenge your limiting beliefs. Remember, thoughts are just thoughts, and they can be changed. So choose empowering beliefs. Look for evidence that proves them right, and surround yourself with positive people who believe in you. And in doing so, you will pave the way for your own success. In today's message, we're going to talk about something that I know many of you are struggling with. Feeling stuck and unable to make progress towards your goals. It's a common struggle, and I want you to know that you are not alone. I've been there too, and I understand the frustration and disappointment that comes with it. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you have taken the first step towards turning things around. You have shown the willingness to learn and grow, and that is the key to getting unstuck and making progress towards your goals. So congratulations on taking this step, my friends. Now let's dive into the five ways that will help you break through the barriers and achieve the success you desire. Are you ready? Let's begin. Starting with number five, my friends. If you can master this fifth way, you will be well on your way to achieving all of your dreams and aspirations. So what is this fifth way, you may ask? It is quite simple, yet incredibly powerful. The fifth way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to stay committed and consistent. Now I know what you may be thinking. Jim, that's easier said than done. How can I possibly stay committed and consistent when life throws me curveballs and obstacles? And to that, I say this. It all starts with your mindset. You see, my friends, commitment and consistency are not just actions. They are a state of mind. It is a mindset that you must cultivate and nurture in order to achieve success. The first step in developing this mindset is to understand the power of your thoughts. Your thoughts are the driving force behind your actions. If you think negatively, you will act negatively. But if you think positively, you will act positively. So, my friends, I urge you to start monitoring your thoughts. Pay attention to the words you speak to yourself and the beliefs you hold about yourself. Are they positive or negative? Are they helping or hindering your progress? Remember, your thoughts have the power to shape your reality. So make sure you are feeding your mind with positive thoughts and beliefs that will keep you committed and consistent on your journey toward success. But it's not just about positive thinking. It's also about having a clear and specific vision for your goals. You must know exactly what it is that you want to achieve and why you want to achieve it. This will give you a sense of purpose and drive which will keep you committed and consistent in the face of challenges and setbacks. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So make sure you have a clear destination in mind and stay focused on it. Now, I want to address something that often holds people back from staying committed and consistent, and that is the fear of failure. Many of us have a fear of failing, of not being good enough, of not living up to our own expectations. But let me tell you, my friends, Failure is not something to be feared. In fact, it is an essential part of the journey toward success. It is through our failures that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. So I urge you to embrace failure. Embrace it as a necessary stepping stone towards your goals. And when you do fail, which you inevitably will, don't let it discourage you. Instead, use it as a learning opportunity and keep moving forward. Remember, it is not about how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up and keep going. Another key aspect of staying committed and consistent is to have a plan in place. You must have a roadmap that will guide you towards your goals. This plan should include specific actions and milestones that you will take to make progress towards your goals. And most importantly, it should be flexible. Life is unpredictable, and your plan may need to be adjusted along the way. But as long as you have a plan, you will have a clear direction and a sense of purpose. But having a plan is not enough. You must also take action. You must be willing to put in the work and make sacrifices to achieve your goals. As the saying goes, the road to success is always under construction. It will not be easy, but it will be worth it. So my friends, I urge you to take action every single day towards your goals, even if it's just a small step. It will keep you moving forward and bring you closer to your dreams. And finally, I want to touch on the importance of accountability. It is crucial to have someone or something that holds you accountable for your actions. This could be a mentor, a coach, a friend, or even a journal. When you have someone or something to answer to, you are more likely to stay committed and consistent. 
And remember, it's not just about being accountable to others, but also to yourself. Hold yourself accountable for your actions, and you will see how much progress you can make. Now, to number four. The fourth way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to learn from setbacks and failures. Now, I know what you're thinking. Failures. Setbacks. That doesn't sound very motivating, does it? But let me tell you, my friends, it is in those moments of failure and setback that we truly learn and grow. It is in those moments that we are forced to reevaluate our actions and make necessary changes in order to move forward. You see, setbacks and failures are not signs of weakness or defeat. They are simply opportunities for growth and improvement. As the great Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And that, my friends, is the key to learning from setbacks and failures. Having the courage to continue. So how do we learn from setbacks and failures? How do we turn those moments of disappointment into opportunities for growth? Well, the first step is to change our mindset. Instead of viewing setbacks and failures as something to be ashamed of, we must view them as valuable learning experiences. Think about it. Every successful person you know has faced setbacks and failures. But what sets them apart is their ability to learn from those experiences and use them to their advantage. They don't let failures define them, but rather they use them as stepping stones toward success. The second step is to take responsibility. It's easy to blame external factors for our failures, the economy, our boss, our circumstances. But the truth is, we are ultimately responsible for our own success or failure. And when we take responsibility, we take back control of our lives and our future. The third step is to reflect and analyze. When we face a setback or failure, it's important to take a step back and reflect on what went wrong. What actions did we take that led to this outcome? What could we have done differently? By analyzing our mistakes, we can learn from them and make better choices in the future. The fourth step is to keep going. As I mentioned earlier, it takes courage to continue after a setback or failure. But that is exactly what we must do. We must pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and keep moving forward. As long as we keep going, we are making progress towards our goals. And the fifth and final step is to use setbacks and failures as motivation. Let them fuel your fire and drive you toward success. Use them as a reminder of why you started on this journey in the first place. And when you do achieve success, you can look back at those moments and be proud of how far you have come. Now I know that learning from setbacks and failures is not easy. It takes resilience, determination, and a strong mindset. But let me tell you, my friends, it is worth it. Because when we learn from our failures, we become stronger, wiser, and more equipped to handle any challenges that come our way. Now to number three. The third way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is by surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. Now I know some of you may be thinking, Jim, that sounds like common sense. Of course we should surround ourselves with positive and supportive people. And you're right, it is common sense. But as my mentor Earl Schaff used to say, Common sense is not always common practice. So today, I want to remind you of the power of your environment and the people you choose to surround yourself with. You see, we are greatly influenced by the people we spend the most time with. As the famous motivational speaker Les Brown once said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Think about that for a moment. Who are the five people you spend the most time with? Are they positive and supportive individuals who uplift and inspire you? Or are they negative and toxic individuals who drain your energy and hold you back? Now, I understand that sometimes we can't choose our family or co-workers, but we can choose our friends and the activities we engage in outside of work. And that is where we must be intentional about surrounding ourselves with positive and supportive people. Positive and supportive people have a contagious energy. They radiate positivity, and their enthusiasm is infectious. Just being around them can lift your spirits and motivate you to take action towards your goals. They believe in you, and their belief can be the fuel that propels you forward. On the other hand, negative and toxic people have a draining energy. They complain, criticize, and bring others down with their pessimism. Being around them can leave you feeling depleted and demotivated. They may even try to discourage you from pursuing your goals, as they are often afraid to take risks themselves. And if you're not careful, their negativity can seep into your mind and hold you back from reaching your full potential. So the question is, how do we surround ourselves with positive and supportive people? Well, 
It starts with being intentional about the relationships we cultivate. We must be selective about who we allow into our inner circle and the activities we engage in. First and foremost, we must be positive and supportive ourselves. As the saying goes, you attract what you are, not what you want. If we want to attract positive and supportive people, we must first embody those qualities ourselves. We must be the kind of person we want to surround ourselves with. Secondly, we must seek out like-minded individuals. Look for people who share similar values, goals, and interests. These are the people who will understand and support your journey. They will also challenge and inspire you to become the best version of yourself. Next, we must be willing to let go of toxic relationships. This can be a difficult and uncomfortable process, but it is necessary for our growth and well-being. As the saying goes, sometimes you have to let go of the old to make room for the new. And that applies to relationships as well. If someone is constantly bringing you down and hindering your progress, it may be time to distance yourself from them. Additionally, we must be open to meeting new people. Sometimes we can get stuck in our routines and only interact with the same group of people. But by stepping out of our comfort zone and meeting new people, we open ourselves up to new perspectives and opportunities. Attend networking events, join a club or organization, or even strike up a conversation with someone new at the gym. You never know who you might meet and how they may impact your life. And finally, we must be willing to be vulnerable and ask for help. It takes courage to admit that we need support, but it is essential for our growth. Don't be afraid to reach out to a mentor, coach, or friend for guidance and encouragement. Remember, we are not meant to do this journey alone. We all need support and guidance along the way. Now, to number two. I am here to tell you that the number two way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to take action and start small. You see, many of us have big dreams and aspirations, but we often get stuck in the planning phase. We spend hours, days, and weeks creating the perfect plan, but we fail to take action. We wait for the perfect moment, the perfect opportunity, the perfect circumstances. But let me tell you, my friends, there is no such thing as a perfect moment. The only moment we have is right now and it is up to us to make the most of it. So what does it mean to take action and start small? It means to take that first step towards your goal, no matter how small it may seem. It means to stop waiting for the perfect moment and start creating your own perfect moment. It means to have the courage to step out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. It means to have faith in yourself and your abilities. You see, success is not about making big leaps. It is about taking small steps consistently, it is about building momentum and staying committed to your goals. And the best way to do that is to start small. Let me give you an example. If your goal is to lose 50 LEBs, don't try to do it all at once. Start by making small changes in your diet and exercise routine. Maybe start by cutting out sugary drinks or going for a 15-minute walk every day. These small actions may seem insignificant, but they add up over time. And before you know it, you will have reached your goal. Another reason why it is important to start small is that it helps us build confidence. When we take small actions and see results, it gives us the confidence to take bigger actions. It is like building a muscle. You start with light weights and gradually increase as you get stronger. The same goes for our goals. We start with small actions and gradually increase as we gain momentum and confidence. But I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, what if I fail? What if I take action and it doesn't work out? My friends, failure is a part of the journey to success. It is not something to be feared but rather embraced. Because every failure brings with it a valuable lesson and an opportunity to grow. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So my friends, do not let the fear of failure hold you back from taking action and starting small. Now I know that taking action and starting small may seem simple. But let me tell you, it is not easy. It takes discipline, commitment, and perseverance. It means showing up every day, even when you don't feel like it. It means pushing through the obstacles and setbacks. But I can assure you, my friends, that the rewards are worth it. So how do we take action and start small? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. Set specific and measurable goals for yourself. Write them down and review them every day. This will keep you focused and motivated. The next step is to create a plan of action. Break down your goals into smaller, manageable tasks. This will make it easier for you to take action and stay on track. And remember, 
It is okay to adjust your plan as you go along. The important thing is to keep moving forward. And finally, my friends, the most important step is to take action. Do not wait for the perfect moment. Create your own perfect moment. Take that first step, no matter how small it may seem, and then take another step, and another, and another. Before you know it, you will have made significant progress towards your goals. Now, to number one. And after years of research and personal experience, I can confidently say that the key to achieving your goals lies in one simple word. Planning. You see, we all have dreams and desires. We all have goals that we want to achieve, whether it's to become financially independent, start a successful business, or improve our health and relationships. We all have something that we want to accomplish. But often, we find ourselves stuck, unable to move forward and make progress towards our goals. We get caught up in the daily grind, we get distracted by the latest trends and fads, and we lose sight of what truly matters. But I am here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. You have the power to break free from the chains of mediocrity, and create a life that is filled with purpose and meaning. And it all starts with a clear and specific plan. Now I know that planning may not sound like the most exciting or glamorous thing, but let me tell you, it is the foundation of all success. Without a plan, you are like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. But with a plan, you have a direction, a purpose, and a roadmap to guide you towards your destination. So how do you create a clear and specific plan? Let me share with you the steps that have worked for me and countless others who have achieved their goals and dreams. Step 1. Define your goal. The first step in creating a plan is to clearly define your goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Be specific and write it down. Whether it's to lose 20 levies, save $10,000, or start your own business, write it down and make it tangible. Step 2. Set a deadline. Next, set a deadline for when you want to achieve your goal. This will create a sense of urgency and motivate you to take action. Without a deadline, your goal will remain a distant dream, always just out of reach. Step 3. Break it down into smaller, actionable steps. Now that you have a clear goal and a deadline, it's time to break it down into smaller, actionable steps. This will make your goal more manageable and less overwhelming. For example, if your goal is to save $10,000, you can break it down into saving $1,000 each month for the next 10 months. Step 4. Create a timeline. Once you have your smaller steps, create a timeline for when you will complete each one. This will help you stay on track and ensure that you are making progress towards your goal. It's important to be realistic with your timeline, but also push yourself to stay accountable and motivated. Step 5. Identify potential obstacles and solutions. No plan is foolproof, and there will always be obstacles and challenges along the way. But the key is to identify them beforehand and come up with solutions to overcome them. This will prevent you from getting derailed and keep you focused on your goal. Step 6. Take action and review your progress. Now that you have a clear and specific plan, it's time to take action. Remember, a plan is only effective if you put it into action, and as you make progress towards your goal, be sure to review your plan regularly and make any necessary adjustments. My friends, this may seem like a simple and straightforward process, but I assure you, it is the most powerful tool you have in achieving your goals and getting unstuck. It's not about having the perfect plan, it's about taking action and making progress towards your dreams. As we move into our next topic of personal development, I urge you to take this number one way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals, and apply it to all areas of your life, whether it's your career, relationships, health, or finances. A clear and specific plan will be your guiding light towards success. Before we go, I want to leave you with this quote from Benjamin Franklin. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So go forth and create your plan, and I have no doubt that you will achieve greatness and live a life of purpose and fulfillment. Thank you. Hello my friends, today I want to talk to you about something that we all struggle with at some point in our lives. Getting up and getting things done. We've all been there, feeling overwhelmed and unmotivated, with a never-ending to-do list weighing us down. But the good news is, you are not alone in the struggle. In fact, I believe that we all have the potential to overcome this obstacle and achieve greatness. That's why in today's message I want to share with you five ways to get up and get it done. 
These are practical and actionable tips that have helped me and countless others turn things around and become more productive. So, if you're feeling stuck, tired, or just lacking motivation, this video is for you. By the end of it, I guarantee that you will have a new perspective and the tools to take control of your day and make the most out of every moment. Remember, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. Let's get started. It's an honor to share with you the fifth way to get up and get it done. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, as it is a principle that has guided me throughout my entire life. I am talking about the power of just do it. You see, we live in a society where we are bombarded with excuses and justifications for why we can't achieve our goals. We are constantly told that we are not good enough, smart enough, or talented enough to make our dreams a reality. And unfortunately, many of us have bought into this mindset. We have allowed ourselves to become victims of our circumstances, believing that we are powerless to change our lives. But I am here to tell you that this is simply not true. The power to change your life lies within you. It is not dependent on your circumstances or your abilities. It is dependent on your willingness to take action. So, what does it mean to just do it? It means taking action even when you don't feel like it. It means pushing through your fears and doubts and doing what needs to be done. It means being disciplined and consistent in your actions, even when it's hard. It means being proactive rather than reactive. You see, success is not a matter of luck or chance. It is a matter of choice. It is a choice to take action, to be persistent, and to never give up. And the good news is, this choice is available to each and every one of us. We all have the ability to just do it. Now I know that taking action can be scary. It means stepping out of your comfort zone and facing your fears. But I want you to remember this. Fear is just an illusion. It is a thought, a feeling, but it is not real. The only way to conquer fear is to face it head on. And the more you do, the less power it will have over you. So, how do we just do it in practical terms? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. You must know exactly what you want and why you want it. This will give you the motivation and drive to take action. Next, you must create a plan. A plan is like a roadmap that will guide you towards your destination. It will help you stay focused and on track. And remember, your plan may not be perfect, but it is better to have a plan and adjust along the way than to have no plan at all. Now here's the key. Take action every single day. It doesn't matter how small the action is as long as you are moving forward. As the saying goes, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Small actions consistently taken will lead to big results. And when you face obstacles, and trust me, you will face obstacles, don't let them stop you. Instead, see them as opportunities to learn and grow. Remember, every successful person has faced challenges and setbacks. It's how you respond to them that will determine your success. Another important aspect of just do it is to be accountable. Find someone who can hold you accountable and help you stay on track. This could be a friend, a mentor, or a coach. Having someone to answer to will keep you motivated and help you stay focused on your goals. And finally, I want to remind you to celebrate your successes, no matter how small they may seem. This will give you the motivation to keep going and will help you build momentum towards your bigger goals. So my friends, I urge you to just do it. Take action towards your dreams and goals every single day. Don't let fear or excuses hold you back. Remember, you have the power to create the life you desire, but it all starts with a choice to take action. Now let's move on to the fourth way to get up and get it done, and that's by eliminating distractions. Now I know what you're thinking. Jim, how is this different? Isn't staying focused and avoiding procrastination enough? Well, my friends, let me tell you, eliminating distractions is a whole different ballgame. You see, distractions are like weeds in a garden. They may seem small and harmless at first, but if left unchecked, they can choke out all the beautiful flowers and fruits that you have worked so hard to cultivate. Similarly, distractions may seem insignificant, but they have the power to derail your progress and hinder your success. So, how do we eliminate distractions? The first step is to identify them. What are the things that constantly pull you away from your goals and dreams? Is it social media? Is it your phone? Is it your friends or family? Is it your own thoughts and doubts? Whatever it may be, it's important to recognize them and acknowledge their impact on your life. 
The second step is to make a conscious effort to remove these distractions from your life. This may mean setting boundaries with your phone and social media usage, saying no to certain social events, or even taking a break from certain people who constantly bring negativity into your life. It's not easy, but it's necessary if you want to reach your full potential. Now I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I can't just cut people out of my life like that. It's rude and disrespectful. And to that, I say, you are not responsible for other people's reactions. You are responsible for your own life and your own success. If certain people are hindering your progress, it's time to have an honest conversation with them or distance yourself from them. Remember, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose wisely. The third step is to create an environment that is conducive to your success. This means setting up your workspace in a way that minimizes distractions and maximizes productivity. Keep your phone out of sight, turn off notifications, and surround yourself with motivational quotes and images that keep you focused on your goals. Remember, your environment plays a crucial role in your mindset and your ability to stay on track. The fourth step is to master the art of saying no. This is a skill that many of us struggle with, but it's essential if we want to eliminate distractions. Learn to say no to things that don't align with your goals and priorities. This may mean declining invitations to events that don't add value to your life, or turning down opportunities that may seem appealing, but will ultimately take you away from your ultimate goal. The fifth and final step is to practice mindfulness. This means being fully present in the moment and focusing on one task at a time. We live in a society that glorifies multitasking, but the truth is, it's not effective. When we try to do multiple things at once, we end up doing all of them poorly. Instead, focus on one task at a time, give it your full attention, and watch how much more productive and efficient you become. Now I understand that eliminating distractions is not easy. It takes discipline and determination. But let me tell you, the rewards are worth it. When you eliminate distractions, you free up your time and energy to focus on what truly matters. You become more productive, more efficient, and ultimately more successful. So my friends, I challenge you to take a hard look at your life and identify the distractions that are holding you back. It may be uncomfortable, but it's necessary. Remember, you are in control of your life and your success. Don't let distractions rob you of your potential. Eliminate them, and watch how your life transforms. Now, let's move on to the number three way to get up and get it done. I have spent my life studying the principles of success and personal development, and I am here to tell you that this number three way is crucial in achieving your goals and living a fulfilled life. So, what is this number three way? It is none other than breaking it down. Yes, you heard me right. Breaking it down is the key to getting things done. You see, many of us have big dreams and aspirations, but we often get overwhelmed by the enormity of our goals. We look at the end result and think, how am I ever going to get there? But the truth is, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that single step is breaking it down. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a dream of starting your own business. The thought of starting a business can be daunting. You may think, I don't have enough money, or I don't have the skills, or I don't have the time. But if you break it down, you will see that starting a business is not as overwhelming as it seems. The first step is to come up with a business idea. This can be as simple as identifying a problem in your community and finding a solution for it. Once you have your idea, the next step is to create a business plan. This includes researching your target market, creating a budget, and outlining your marketing strategies. Then, you can start taking action by registering your business, finding a location, and launching your product or service. You see, by breaking down your goal of starting a business into smaller manageable steps, it becomes less intimidating and more achievable. And this principle applies to any goal you may have, whether it's losing weight, writing a book, or learning a new skill. But breaking it down is not just about setting smaller goals. It's also about creating a plan and taking action. You cannot expect to achieve your goals by simply dreaming about them. You need to have a plan and take consistent action towards them. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have the time to break it down. I have a busy schedule. Well, let me tell you this, my friends. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's not about how much time you have, but how you use it. If you truly want to achieve your goals, 
you will make the time for it, then breaking it down will actually save you time in the long run. By having a clear plan, you will avoid wasting time on unnecessary tasks and focus on what truly matters. Breaking it down also allows you to track your progress. When you have smaller goals, it's easier to see how far you've come and what you still need to do. This will give you a sense of accomplishment and motivate you to keep going. But let me warn you, my friends, breaking it down is not a one-time task. It's an ongoing process. As you achieve one goal, you need to break down the next one. And as you face challenges and obstacles, you may need to adjust your plan and break it down even further. But that's okay. That's part of the journey towards success. Now some of you may be wondering, but Jim, what if I fail? What if I don't achieve my goals? And to that, I say, failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of it. Every successful person has faced failure at some point in their journey. But the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is that successful people don't let failure stop them. They learn from it, they adapt, and they keep moving forward. So don't be afraid of failure. Embrace it and use it as a stepping stone towards your success. Now, to number two. The number two way to get up and get it done is setting a deadline. As a personal development guru, I have seen countless individuals struggle with achieving their goals and dreams. They have big ideas and aspirations, but they lack the discipline and motivation to turn those dreams into reality. And that's where setting a deadline comes in. You see, a deadline is not just a date on a calendar. It is a powerful tool that can push you to take action, stay focused, and ultimately achieve your goals. It is the difference between wishing for something and actually making it happen. So let me ask you this. How many times have you set a goal for yourself, only to let it fall by the wayside because you didn't have a deadline? How many times have you said, I'll do it tomorrow, and tomorrow turns into next week, next month, or even next year? I believe that we all have the potential to achieve greatness, but it takes discipline and determination to turn that potential into reality. And setting a deadline is one of the most effective ways to cultivate those qualities within ourselves. It forces us to take action, to make a plan, and to follow through on that plan. It holds us accountable and keeps us on track. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, deadlines are so stressful. I don't want to add more stress to my life. And to that I say, stress is not always a bad thing. In fact, a little bit of stress can be a great motivator. It pushes us out of our comfort zones and into action. It forces us to prioritize and make the most of our time. So instead of viewing deadlines as a source of stress, view them as a source of motivation and opportunity. Let me share with you a personal story. When I first started my career, I had big dreams of becoming a successful entrepreneur and speaker. But I was also a master procrastinator. I would constantly push things off until the last minute, and as a result, I wasn't making much progress toward my goals. That is, until I learned the power of setting a deadline. I remember the day I made a decision to set a deadline for myself. I wrote down my goal, which was to become a millionaire by the age of 30, and then I wrote down a specific date, December 31st, 1981. That was my deadline, and let me tell you, it was a game changer. Suddenly, I had a sense of urgency and purpose. I had a clear deadline to work towards, and it lit a fire within me. I started taking action every single day. I made a plan, I followed through on it, and I kept my eye on the prize. And you know what? That deadline motivated me to achieve my goal. I became a millionaire by the age of 31, just one year after my deadline. And that, my friends, is the power of setting a deadline. Now, I'm not saying that setting a deadline will guarantee success. It takes hard work, dedication, and a willingness to learn and adapt. But a deadline can be the driving force that propels you toward your goals. It can give you the focus and determination you need to overcome obstacles and keep moving forward. So, how do you set effective deadlines for yourself? First and foremost, your deadline should be specific and measurable. Don't just say, I want to lose weight. Instead say, I want to lose 20 pounds by June 30th. This gives you a clear goal to work towards and a specific timeline to achieve it. Secondly, your deadline should be realistic. Don't set a deadline that is impossible to achieve. That will only lead to disappointment and demotivation. Instead, set a deadline that challenges you but is still attainable with hard work and dedication. Thirdly, your deadline should be written down. This may seem like a small detail, but writing down your deadline solidifies it and makes it more real. Put it somewhere you will see it every day. 
like on your bathroom mirror or on your phone's lock screen. This will serve as a constant reminder of what you are working towards. And finally, your deadline should have consequences. Yes, this may sound harsh, but consequences can be a powerful motivator. If you don't meet your deadline, there should be a consequence that you have to face. This could be something as simple as donating money to a charity, or something more personal like not allowing yourself to watch TV for a week. The consequences should be meaningful to you and serve as a reminder to stay on track. So my friends, I urge you to start setting deadlines for yourself. Whether it's for your personal goals, your career, or your relationships, a deadline can be the key to turning your dreams into reality. Embrace the power of deadlines, and you will see the incredible impact it can have on your life. I'm excited to share with you the number one way to get up and get it done. Are you ready to take your life to the next level? Are you ready to achieve your dreams and reach your full potential? Then listen closely, because what I'm about to share with you has the power to transform your life. The number one way to get up and get it done is to make a plan. It sounds simple, doesn't it? Yet so many people fail to do this one crucial step. They have big dreams and ambitions, but they never take the time to sit down and plan out how they will achieve them. They go through life aimlessly, hoping that things will just fall into place. But let me tell you, hope is not a strategy. You see, a plan is like a roadmap. It gives you direction and helps you stay on track. Just like you wouldn't embark on a road trip without a map, you shouldn't embark on your journey toward success without a plan. A plan gives you a clear path to follow and helps you make the most of your time and resources. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't know how to make a plan. I'm not a strategic thinker. Well, let me tell you, making a plan is not rocket science. It's a simple process that anyone can do. And today, I'm going to share with you the steps to creating a plan that will help you get up and get it done. Step 1. Define your goals. The first step in creating a plan is to define your goals. What is it that you want to achieve? Be specific. Don't just say, I want to be successful. What does success mean to you? Is it financial freedom? Is it a fulfilling career? Is it a happy and healthy family? Write down your goals and be as specific as possible. Step 2. Prioritize your goals. Once you have defined your goals, it's time to prioritize them. What is the most important goal to you right now? What do you want to achieve first? This step is crucial because it helps you focus your energy and resources on the most important goal. Step 3. Create a timeline. Now that you have your goals and priorities set, it's time to create a timeline. When do you want to achieve each goal? Be realistic, but also push yourself. Set deadlines for yourself and stick to them. This will help you stay motivated and on track. Step 4. Break down your goals. The next step is to break down your goals into smaller manageable tasks. This will make them less overwhelming and more achievable. For example, if your goal is to start a successful business, some of the tasks you may need to do include market research, creating a business plan, and securing funding. By breaking down your goals into smaller tasks, you can focus on one thing at a time and make progress towards your ultimate goal. Step 5. Take action. Now that you have a plan in place, it's time to take action. This is where most people fail. They have a plan, but they never take action on it. Don't let that be you. Take consistent action towards your goals every day. Do something that will bring you closer to achieving your goals. Step 6. Review and adjust. As you work towards your goals, it's essential to review your plan regularly and make adjustments if necessary. Life is unpredictable, and things may not always go as planned, but that's okay. Review your plan, make adjustments, and keep moving forward. Making a plan is the number one way to get up and get it done. It's a simple yet powerful tool that can help you achieve your dreams and reach your full potential. But remember, a plan is only effective if you take action. So don't just sit there and dream about your goals. Get up, make a plan, and take action towards your dreams. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what about personal development? Isn't that important too? Absolutely. In fact, making a plan is just the first step towards personal development. In part two of this speech, we will dive deeper into personal development and how it can help you achieve your goals and live a fulfilling life. But for now, I want to leave you with this quote from the great Zig Ziglar. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So my friends, 
Let's start today. Let's make a plan and take action towards our goals. And I guarantee you, with determination and hard work, success will be within your reach. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here with you today to share a compelling message on transitioning from a mindset of scarcity to one of abundance in today's fast-paced world. It's easy to become ensnared in the daily grind and feel trapped in a cycle of financial hardship. But let me assure you, you are not alone. Many individuals face similar challenges and wonder how to break free from the constraints of a scarcity mindset. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not only possible, but also within your reach. By tuning into this message, you're taking the crucial first step toward transforming your circumstances. Over the years, I've delved into the habits and mindsets of successful individuals, discovering that it all begins with our thoughts and beliefs. In this video, I'll outline five effective methods to shift your mindset from one of lack and scarcity to one of abundance and prosperity. These are actionable steps that you can start implementing in your life today. So, prepare to open your mind and release any limiting beliefs, because it's time to unlock your full potential and manifest the life of your dreams. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Starting with number five, which involves transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by practicing gratitude. You might be wondering, what does gratitude have to do with achieving wealth? The answer is quite simple, my friends. Gratitude serves as the gateway to abundance and prosperity. When we find ourselves immersed in scarcity, it's natural to fixate on what we lack, leading to a perpetual cycle of inadequacy. However, by cultivating gratitude, we redirect our focus towards what we do possess. We become cognizant of the blessings and abundance already present in our lives, thereby attracting more of the same. It's akin to a magnet drawing in positivity and abundance. Now you might protest, but I don't have much to be grateful for. I'm struggling to make ends meet, and it feels like I have nothing. I understand your perspective, but let me remind you that gratitude transcends material possessions and financial triumphs. It's about appreciating life's simple pleasures, the air we breathe, the love of our families, the opportunities at our disposal, and the lessons we learn. Gratitude is a mindset, a lens through which we view the world, uncovering the silver lining in every situation. Moreover, gratitude isn't merely about feeling good. It's about taking action. When we cultivate gratitude, we're inclined to nurture what we have, invest in ourselves and our future, and magnetize opportunities for growth and success. Therefore, I challenge you to embrace gratitude as a daily ritual. Each morning, before embarking on your day's journey, take a moment to reflect on the abundance in your life. Similarly, before retiring for the night, ponder upon the day's blessings. This simple practice has the power to revolutionize your mindset and consequently, your life. Allow me to introduce a potent exercise for nurturing gratitude. The Gratitude Journal. Every day, jot down at least three things you're thankful for. Whether it's a stranger's smile, a modest meal, or a promotion at work, specificity is key. As you inscribe these blessings, immerse yourself in the genuine emotion of gratitude. I've personally adopted this practice for years, witnessing its profound impact on my life. It's kept me grounded and optimistic, even amidst adversity, while unveiling the abundance that surrounds me. Friends, I cannot overstate the significance of gratitude. It serves as the cornerstone of a prosperous mindset. As you continue to cultivate this mindset, you'll naturally attract more abundance and success into your life. Moving on to number four, let's explore transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by taking calculated risks. What precisely do I mean by calculated risks? I'm referring to strategic leaps that have been meticulously planned and analyzed, not haphazard ventures devoid of strategy or purpose. Achieving success demands stepping beyond your comfort zone, embracing the unknown, and seizing opportunities for growth and advancement. Allow me to illustrate this principle with a personal anecdote. During my youth I toiled as a stock clerk at a grocery store, barely scraping by. However, I yearned for more. A desire that impelled me to invest a mere $5 in a personal development seminar, that modest investment catalyzed a seismic shift in my life unveiling a realm of possibilities and opportunities hitherto unseen. Henceforth, I committed to nurturing my personal growth and embracing calculated risks to realize my aspirations. I'm not insinuating that every risk yields success, but rather that abstaining from risks ensures perpetual mediocrity. Indeed, 
The greatest risk in life is avoiding risk altogether. Resigning oneself to a life of complacency and security, devoid of fulfillment and accomplishment. Granted, venturing into the unknown may evoke trepidation, but the dividends, lessons learned, experiences gained, and successes attained, far outweigh the initial apprehension. So, how does one embark on calculated risks? Firstly, delineate your goals and aspirations. What do you ardently desire in life? Visualize your objectives, chart a course of action, and commit to its realization. Subsequently, assess the potential risks and rewards. Contemplate the best and worst case scenarios, gauging whether the risk aligns with your aspirations. Thirdly, arm yourself with knowledge and insight. Educate yourself on the risks at hand, consulting individuals who've treaded similar paths. Finally, trust your intuition and take decisive action. Believe in your capacity to navigate challenges and embark on your journey with unwavering resolve. Remember, success isn't a terminus, it's a voyage. Embracing calculated risks distinguishes the ordinary from the extraordinary, paving the path to a mindset of abundance and a life replete with prosperity. Transitioning to number three, let's discuss transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by surrounding yourself with successful individuals. Undoubtedly, your mindset is the linchpin of your success. It shapes your thoughts, actions, and outcomes. Thus, fostering a mindset of abundance is imperative, and one potent catalyst for this transformation is your social milieu. But what precisely constitutes a mindset of abundance? It's a perspective teeming with prospects, characterized by growth, abundance, and optimism. It reveres diligence, perseverance, and resilience, shunning the shackles of fear and complacency. Contrary to popular belief, success transcends material wealth. It encompasses fulfillment, purpose, and positive impact. So why is it paramount to orbit oneself with accomplished individuals? Primarily, success begets success. By aligning yourself with triumphant individuals, you're exposed to their mindset, habits, and comportment. Humans are inherently imitative. We subconsciously assimilate the traits of those we frequent. Consequently, by surrounding yourself with success, you're more inclined to emulate their outlook and practices, catalyzing your own success. Moreover, successful individuals serve as invaluable mentors and role models. Success leaves clues, and who better to decipher them than those who've traversed the path you aspire to? Seasoned veterans can furnish you with insights, counsel and perspectives gleaned from their odyssey, propelling you closer to your aspirations. Furthermore, your social milieu augments your network and opportunities. Success seldom unfolds in solitude. It's often a collaborative endeavor. By congregating with accomplished individuals, you forge alliances with kindred spirits, fostering collaborations and alliances that enrich your journey. Indeed, the adage holds true. Your network is your net worth. But you might contend, I hail from humble beginnings, devoid of connections or affluence. Allow me to dispel this fallacy. Success knows no socioeconomic stratum. It's attainable to all who are willing to toil and consort with the right cohort. Successful individuals hail from diverse backgrounds, but they share a common thread, an abundance mindset. And you too can cultivate this mindset by aligning yourself with the triumphant. So, how does one rendezvous with success? Firstly, partake in events, conferences and seminars germane to your pursuits. These forums furnish opportunities to encounter accomplished individuals and glean insights from their exploits. Don't demur from initiating discourse, solicit their wisdom and absorb their sagacity. Secondly, immerse yourself in clubs, organizations, or collectives resonant with your aspirations. These bastions harbor kindred souls, fostering an environment conducive to growth and collaboration. By mingling with like-minded individuals, you fortify your resolve and amplify your prospects. Thirdly, imbibe wisdom from literature, podcasts, and interviews featuring luminaries in your field. Leverage social media to engage with these luminaries, soliciting their guidance and insights. Remember, knowledge knows no bounds. Embrace every avenue of erudition. Lastly, be audacious. Transcend your comfort zone and embrace uncertainty. The dividends of venturing beyond familiarity outweigh the ephemeral pangs of trepidation. Trust in your resilience and potential, and embark on your quest for abundance with unwavering resolve. In summation, 
Fostering an abundance mindset is contingent upon your social milieu. By congregating with success and absorbing their wisdom, you cultivate the mindset requisite for triumph. Transitioning to number two, let's delve into transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset through education. Education is the linchpin of enlightenment. It propels us toward self-actualization and empowers us to surmount adversity. While formal education is one avenue, education transcends the confines of academia. It's a lifelong odyssey of erudition and discovery. Why is education indispensable for nurturing an abundance mindset? Knowledge equips us with the acumen to discern opportunities amidst adversity, enabling us to navigate life's labyrinth with perspicacity and poise. As the adage avers, knowledge is power. It furnishes us with the wherewithal to surmount obstacles and unlock our latent potential. Moreover, education fosters critical thinking, a quintessential trait for navigating life's vicissitudes. Through education, we hone our analytical faculties, fortifying our capacity to scrutinize information and extrapolate insights. Consequently, we're better equipped to make informed decisions, catalyzing our personal and professional growth. But what if you've been deprived of a formal education? Fear not, for education is ubiquitous. It permeates every facet of existence. Whether perusing literature, engaging in discourse, or gleaning wisdom from mentors, opportunities for erudition abound. As exemplified by luminaries like Oprah Winfrey, whose indomitable spirit transcended her humble origins, education is within reach of all who dare to seize it. So, how can one commence their educational odyssey? Firstly, cultivate an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Approach life with inquisitiveness, perpetually questing for enlightenment and elucidation. Secondly, be deliberate in your pursuit of erudition. Dedicate time each day to reading, listening to podcasts, or partaking in online courses. Cast your net wide, embracing a multiplicity of disciplines to foster a holistic worldview. Thirdly, immerse yourself in a milieu of learning. Surround yourself with erudite individuals who embody a commitment to lifelong learning. Their zeal will kindle your own, propelling you towards intellectual ascendancy. Lastly, apply the knowledge you accrue. As Plato opined, knowledge which is acquired under compulsion has no hold on the mind. Act upon your insights, transmuting them into tangible outcomes that enrich your life and those around you. By imbuing your endeavors with erudition, you propel yourself towards the zenith of personal and professional fulfillment. In summation, education serves as the cornerstone of an abundance mindset, endowing us with the cognitive arsenal requisite for triumph. Transitioning to our pinnacle, let's elucidate transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by harnessing the power of attitude. Attitude, the quintessence of our psyche, exerts an indelible influence on our trajectory. While external circumstances may fluctuate, our attitude remains a bastion of sovereignty, a potent force that shapes our reality. But what exactly constitutes a mindset of abundance? It's an ethos suffused with optimism, resilience, and audacity. A Weltanschauen that perceives opportunities amidst adversity, imbuing life with purpose and vitality. Contrarywise, a scarcity mindset begets despondency, constraining our potential and stifling our aspirations. So how does one transcend scarcity and embrace abundance? It begins with a shift in attitude, a conscious choice to cultivate optimism, gratitude, and fortitude. Allow me to delineate the steps to fostering a mindset of abundance. 1. Awareness Acknowledge your prevailing attitude, whether it veers towards scarcity or abundance. Awareness is the harbinger of change, catalyzing transformation through introspection and reflection. Two. Gratitude. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude, recognizing life's blessings amidst adversity. By embracing gratitude, you transmute scarcity into abundance, inviting prosperity and fulfillment into your life. 3. Positive self-talk. Monitor your inner dialogue, replacing self-criticism with self-compassion and encouragement. Positivity breeds resilience, fortifying your resolve to surmount obstacles and manifest your aspirations. 4. Social milieu. Surround yourself with individuals who embody an attitude of abundance. Their positivity and resilience will inspire and uplift you, propelling you towards personal and professional triumph. 5. 
Embrace challenges. View challenges as opportunities for growth, reframing setbacks as stepping stones to success. By embracing adversity with fortitude and resilience, you transcend scarcity, ushering in a realm of boundless potential. In conclusion, transitioning from scarcity to abundance is contingent upon a paradigm shift, a conscious choice to embrace optimism, resilience, and audacity. By harnessing the power of attitude, you unleash the latent potential within, catalyzing a transformational journey towards abundance and fulfillment.